physical and chemical changes to materials, there are also geological changes. Now, geological changes happen over millions of years, and we can summarise these changes in the rock cycle. The rest of this unit is going to look at the rock cycle and examples of the three types of rock that you need to know. Volcanic rock is called igneous rock, and igneous comes from the Greek word meaning fire. And that's where it's coming from. Molten rock, hotter than fire. But how is it hot? The centre of the Earth, the core, is thousands of degrees Celsius. It's hot enough to make molten rock, which is what the next layer, the mantle, is made of. The Earth's skin, or crust, is anything from 5 to 75 kilometres thick. It's cooler, and so it's solid. Sometimes the molten rock pours out through volcanoes. This is brown sugar in water. When heated, it becomes like toffee. But when I pour it on this tray, it cools and solidifies like molten rock. And this is what happens with igneous rocks. Igneous rocks have a crystal structure, and the size of the crystals depends on how quickly the rock cools. The quicker it cools, the smaller the crystals. So, here are two examples of igneous rock. This is granite, which has small crystals because of fast cooling, and this is quartz, which has very large crystals due to the rocks cooling slowly. The next clip looks at sedimentary rocks, and these are made by a very different process. Over the years, bits of sedimentary rock settle on the seabed because of gravity, and the layer gets to be very thick. And the thicker the layer gets, the more pressure is exerted on the bottom of it. As the particles get squashed, the water is squeezed out, leaving deposits that cause a process called cementation where the particles are cemented together. Over time, the squashing and cementing of the sediment forms sedimentary rock. So, sandstone and limestone are sedimentary rocks. They are grainy and crumbly, and sometimes they contain fossils. But ending up like this is not the end of the story for these sedimentary rocks. After this sedimentary rock's made, the weight of the layers pushes them deep underground, where the earth can heat and squash the sedimentary rock further. Now, when it does this, the rock changes yet again, and this third type of rock is called metamorphic. And it's this heat and pressure that give metamorphic rocks special properties. Slate and marble are metamorphic rocks. They are hard and smooth, and very small crystals in layers mean that they can be used for roof slates or tiles, or chiselled and polished into ornaments. Both sedimentary and metamorphic rocks can work their way to the surface and be eroded by the weather and make their own rock cycles. The other possibility is that metamorphic rock can get heated and melted down, ready to be thrown out of the earth again to make igneous rocks. So the whole thing starts again. That's why it's called a rock cycle. The rock cycle is an ongoing cycle of events over millions of years where rocks at the Earth's surface are being continually broken down, reformed and changed. So examples of igneous rocks are basalt and granite. Examples of sedimentary rocks are sandstone and limestone, which are cemented together. And examples of metamorphic rocks are slate and marble, which have been compressed and heated. So, here's a test question. Bricks are made by baking clay. Which type of rock is formed in a similar way? So if bricks are made by baking, that means they're heated. So which type of rock is formed by heating? Stop the tape and have a think. So this question is just looking for the name of the rock, which is metamorphic rock, where the rock is compressed and heated, changing the way it looks. If you weren't 